I am Shua. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. This episode is the continuation to the second part of my interview with Dr. Joseph Kelly on his interfaith and religious journey. A licensed clinical psychologist and musician, he speaks often to parish and community groups in the United States, the UK, Europe, and Australia. Can you tell me about your trip to Rome uh, with meeting with the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> Well, what been, was that part of? I've been very fortunate, uh, you know, as a Catholic and a Catholic theologian. Uh, I try to stay in dialogue with the teaching aspect of the church. Uh, and so I've been fortunate two years ago, I think it was, I met Pope Francis. Uh, I was part of a conference uh, among Christians and Jews in Rome. Uh, and one of the uh, one of the days of the conference, we went over to the Vatican and met with Pope Francis. Okay. And uh, so, did you talk, discuss anything, or does he talk, or did he just meets and then? Uh, he met with the the whole group of about two hundred people. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> we had uh, he gives a bit of a uh, a talk on the importance of interfaith relations. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah, not that's only Jewish and Christian, but Muslim, Hindu, and, and all major religions. He, okay. that's, that's, he's, he calls that a, an ethical imperative oh, of okay. today. So mm-hmm. Christians need to be involved in dialogue and not to retreat into their own world. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and then we had an, an opportunity to uh, meet with him individually just for a few, few moments. How was that? Oh, it was thrilling, you know. Uh, He's pretty much what you see is what you get, a very simple, uh-huh. down-to-earth person. Right. And uh, I asked him to keep my family in his prayers, right. and uh, he said he would. And okay. he said, uh, don't forget to pray for me, too. Said, okay, I will. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Made sure that, yeah, I'm equally human. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, yeah. that's nice. So are you a spiritual person? Ah. <laughs> would you say that? <coughs> are you religious, spiritual? Uh, nowadays, everybody differentiates. Sometimes. Yes, yes. No, I would I would say I'm both. I I try to nurture the life of the spirit. Uh, I think daily prayer is important. Uh, it is for me. And if I uh, get a bit lax and go a few days without prayer, I I kind of lose my direction or focus. Um, so I think it's important for me uh, every day to set aside time for prayer and meditation. Uh, one of the things I admire and respect and try to emulate about the Islamic tradition is the dedication to prayer, mm-hmm. five prayer times every day. Uh, it's a good reminder to me. My Muslim friends uh, remind me, hey, I should be praying daily too. Mm-hmm. So it's important. It, it sets things. Centers you. It centers mm-hmm. me. It sets things right. Mm-hmm. It helps me to remember that God is God mm-hmm. and I'm not and to surrender uh, control, if you will, to God and to allow God to love me and be compassionate. Uh, Prayer also, I think, opens your ears to hear the silence of God, Mm. to to be more aware of the movements in your life that that well up from the mystery of the divine. and also for me as a Catholic, my, my membership in the church is important and mm-hmm. the times I have uh, for common worship, mm-hmm. you know, uh, again, as Muslims do, coming together mm-hmm. with the community uh, at least once a week is very important to me. So, so yes, I, uh, I guess I'm, I try to be spiritual and religious mm-hmm. and I see those two supporting that's what I other. felt always yeah mm-hmm. I, I don't I can't separate them that's right I think yeah. when people say I'm spiritual but not religious mm-hmm. I, I I haven't yeah I have to ask everybody like what do you mean by what that what do you mean by that yeah. and and some people have been hurt by religion by the religious institutions yes. I, I understand that mm-hmm. uh, and you have to allow in an understanding and forgiveness that 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 happens. Mm-hmm. So some people may be alienated. Other people may feel 
they don't need the support of a religious community, mm -hmm. but um, that sort of leaves you on your own. And yeah. uh, one of the things that I am more and more aware of as I get older is how much I don't know, how limited my experience is, wow. uh, and so how important it is to be a member of a tradition that offers you the wisdom of centuries of holy people reflecting on life, reflecting on God, uh, studying sacred texts such as the Bible or the Quran, uh, so that as, a, as an adherent of a religious tradition you have this great gift of wisdom and experience. Mm -hmm. And you have to make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it doesn't uh, free you or uh, uh, absolve you from thinking for yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that uh, it's, you're, in, you're a dialogue partner with mm -hmm. uh, a wide, worldwide community, and that, mm -hmm. that's very enriching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very good, yeah. All right, so let's get to some uh, philosophical life questions, and uh, or before that, let's get into interfaith also, because that's, you have a lot of experience in interfaith, right? And uh, that's where I learned about you right. and uh, and you're this you know uh, good experience with you and um, so can you tell um, for list the, our listeners what is in what does interfaith mean to you what is it I think interfaith relations above all are personal relations they're interpersonal relations mm -hmm. um, and I, I think the best way to come to an understanding of Islam, for example, is to meet a Muslim and become a friend. Mm. Uh, the same with Judaism or Christian, whatever the mm -hmm. faith is, mm -hmm. uh, it can become it, it can be a big abstract idea with a long tradition in history that you know there may be uh, con usually there is conflict in the history uh, among religions. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to put all of that aside and say, here's a human being. Mm -hmm. uh, what does she think? How does she feel? Or what mm -hmm. does he value? What's important mm -hmm. for him? And uh, so primarily interfaith relations are interpersonal relations. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think that's fundamental mm -hmm. to everything. And mm -hmm. as a Christian, mm -hmm. and I know you as a Muslim believe that every human being deserves respect. Yep. Every human being is a child of God. Yes. Uh, so that's where you start. Mm -hmm. um, and then you begin to discover how many similarities there are, especially among the Abrahamic faiths, yes. those of us who are descendant from Abraham in, in faith. Um, as I say, I've learned so much about prayer from Muslims mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also about the sacredness of the text. Mm -hmm. I have a, a number of students, one of whom is Egyptian, and he's very devout. Mm -hmm. He reads the Quran. He's fluent in Arabic, mm -hmm. uh, even though he was born and raised in the United States. Mm -hmm. And to watch him read the text, to watch him read one of the surahs from the Holy Quran, mm -hmm. uh, he, 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 there's an embodiment of the text in his mouth and in his uh, whole person that's mm -hmm. a beautiful revelation of the presence and power of God mm -hmm. in that experience. Mm -hmm. So that makes me ask, do I appreciate the Bible in mm -hmm. such a way mm -hmm. as he does? So we begin to learn how much we have in common, how much we can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. and, and we learn the differences. Mm -hmm. And it's the differences, you know, I have differences with my wife. Mm -hmm. I still love her. Yes, uh, yes. It's the same in uh, interfaith relations. We need to not only allow our differences, but also to value them. I think we learn we learn more from people who are different from us That's true. Uh, in every aspect of life. And I think the same is true in religion. I have learned more what it means to be a Christian uh, from friends from other traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that I have been able to give them that gift mm -hmm. in, in the opposite way. So, um, and I think, uh, w one final word on that, I think to study... Uh, Theology today, to study a religion, to study Christianity, you have to always remain open to questions from other faiths as right. well. You can't right. just be narrow-minded. Right, right. Wouldn't you recommend or suggest that for all the faiths? 
Yes, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, everybody should be open to that. Yeah. You, you, you learn about your religion that way. That's what I, I think I learned by even doing ro yoga, Reiki, and even other mind sciences or practices. Yes. That I oh, I think a, a lot of the, uh, the Buddhist meditation techniques mm -hmm. are very enriching. Yes. We don't need to be afraid of them. Right, you know, right. Uh, right. Yeah, because some people think that, oh, it threatens your faith or your uh, religion if you intermingle or learn or meet other people, uh, other people from different faiths, um, which uh, I never felt. I don't know. Maybe some people might feel that way. Um, yeah, it no, can I, happen. I don't know. And Unless you're not strong in your own uh, well, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a challenge to yeah. learn more about your own faith. Uh, yeah. I grew up in a very uh, Irish Catholic uh, family and neighborhood in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in my early years, uh, even into my teenage years, my, my life was very... Uh, narrow or parochial, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. religiously and culturally. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I went to high school in New York City, mm -hmm. and that broke over <laughs> my world. I said, oh my goodness, who are all these people? Uh, but that was a great, great experience. Nice, nice. All right. Um, so how can people be less suspicious of other faiths? Like, what can they do? Well, I think you have talked about, like, learning about others, making friends, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, any other suggestions before I go into... Well, I think, right, I think the personal encounter is so important. Yeah. And then beyond that, begin to inform yourself. Don't, don't just take what the media says. Don't just watch mm -hmm. the uh, cable news mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, you know, YouTube and all mm -hmm. of that. Get beyond the, the hyper-media world mm -hmm. and do a little careful study of mm -hmm. the history of... Faith. Okay. For example, one of the things we're involved with, uh, one of the great uh, leaders of s human rights mm -hmm. in, the in the 19th century was the great uh, French, uh, rather Algerian resistance leader, Abd al Qader. Mm. Uh, he rose up in Al what is Algeria uh, to fight the French who had invaded and colonized mm -hmm. Algeria. Say his name again? Abd al Qader. Okay. Uh, okay. he, uh, he lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the French defeated him. Uh, but in captivity in France, he became uh, a great statesman. And mm. uh, both the Red, the Red Cross mm -hmm. can trace its origins back to his uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. And even the Declaration of Human Rights from the United Nations has its ultimate uh, foundation uh, in the 19th century in uh, Abd al Qader's mm -hmm. uh, writings. and uh, mm. So not many people would know that, mm. that one of the great human rights proponents mm. of the 19th century was a Muslim resistance fighter. Wow. Uh, okay. yeah, so learning know. those things is, is important. Yeah. Be, be informed. Just yeah. don't... Gives a different perspective about everybody, right? That's not, right. Yeah, That's right. It's not only me. Right. There are other yeah. people who are... Things are much more complex yes, than, than the TV can make them out yeah, to be. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay. Um, let's uh, get to you a little bit because... Um, can you express uh, three of your um, strengths <laughs> that... Uh, you like or your family likes or people around you like or are they all different? <laughs> well, you'd have to talk to all of those people, but uh, <laughs> my strength, I, I think I am, a, I have become a good listener and I, I value it, I practice it. Excellent. Uh, and that's important. I, I hope I am. I yes. try to do it even with my adult children mm -hmm. and my wife mm -hmm. now um, and my students. Um, other strengths? I don't get worked, riled up too easily. Uh, mm -hmm. I can be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, as you get older, you know, your priorities shift and you realize what's important and what's not important. Mm -hmm. And I don't waste a lot of energy on things that That's good. aren't worth it. Need to hang around you more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, what are my challenges? What are my growing points? Yes, what yes. You can uh, yeah, mention those. Your, I don't want to say weaknesses, but yeah, challenges. Well, I, something I'm very aware of, I can be a people pleaser. 
okay. you know, and uh, I have to be careful of that. Uh. For example, I, I give you a good example. In class, when I'm teaching, mm -hmm. am I there to be admired by my students as a good teacher, uh -huh. or am I there to teach them? Uh. Uh, and I think that's something that uh, I struggle with. Uh -huh. The rain is agreeing with you, seems yes, like. Yes, <laughs> I apologize for the, the rain on the, the, the rain air conditioner. The rain is noisy. Um, so, and that sometimes can lead to not a lack of honesty, but it, it's important to be as honest and truthful as possible in all of our relationships. And that's not always easy when you have to say something that you know the other person may not like mm -hmm. or may not like you mm -hmm. because you say it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, That's important differentiation that you're making. I like that. That yeah. whether you want them to, you know, just admire you and... Yeah. We all like to be admired yeah. and loved. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for many years I was in uh, administrative, senior administrative posts here. Mm -hmm. And I always found that challenging because you can't, you're never going to please everybody. That's true. Uh, so you, you should take that off the table. Right. Uh, uh, but, you know, I had to make decisions that had to do with people's lives. Mm. Uh, so how do you do that in a way that respects the truth mm -hmm. and the values of the institution and of you as a person? So those would be struggles uh, mm. Mm. that I had. Another weakness is I tend to take on too much. Mm. Uh, too um, much? Too much work. Okay. Mm. And I'm feeling that. Yeah. Uh, over the past year or so. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I didn't see you. <laughs> I think you're right. I yeah. have not, not been able to yeah. see you since some time. Uh, and my year. wife will remind me, why uh -huh. are you doing all of that? Uh -huh. uh, because it's... Uh, so anyhow, it's a balance. Yeah. It's striking yep. a balance. Yep. Yep. Would you uh, say something about... I, I'm sure you are very good. Um, you would know the value of time. Uh, what is the value of time in your um, mm. experience, your opinion? <laughs> time is precious, as we it all is. say. It it's, is irreversible. It's, it's the only preci really precious yes. thing we have, right? Yeah. Um, How should one spend their time? I think, you know, there's a lot. To, today you hear a lot about mindfulness, yes. living in the moment. Yes. and. Uh, well, that really is nothing new. I think you find it in all of our, certainly the yes. Islamic tradition, and Sufi. Buddhists, and yeah, some, some thousands uh, of years before. So thousands yeah. of years. Of live in the moment. Don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our mind can be like a rabbit that's yes. jumping miles and miles ahead of us, mm -hmm. uh, and dwelling in the moment. Big problems can be overwhelming if we think about all of the possible things that can go wrong or uh -huh. all the possible variations. Uh -huh. But really all we have is the, mo the present moment. That's true. You know? The future exists, but it exists yeah. only oh, in yeah. our anticipation. Mm -hmm. The past exists, but it only exists as a function as of memory. As we are doing this, this is becoming past. That's yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, St. Augustine, uh, in his confession, says if we say, well, I'll get to it this year. He said, what, do, what does that mean? He said, you have to be more specific. Well, I'll get to it this <laughs> month. He said, well, be more specific. Uh -huh. I'll get to it this week or, or today. I'll get to it today. Uh -huh. well, I'll get to it at this hour. Uh -huh. And then he, he further divides time into smaller uh -huh. and smaller, you know, from uh -huh. minutes to seconds to uh -huh. milliseconds. Uh -huh. And he says, what are you left with? He said, you're, you're left with nothing. So he asked the philosophical <laughs> question, what is time? And uh -huh. he seems to imply... It is nothing. Mm. He sounds almost like a Buddhist, <laughs> um, this yes. great Christian bishop. Yeah. But, but I th as I get older, I, I realize there's much more of my time is in my memory than is my, in my anticipation. Mm. Uh, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. Just live in the moment. That, mm -hmm. that is God's gift to us, mm -hmm. this present moment. So you, you learn that with time. Yeah, and with that, meditation and uh -huh, prayer, I that think that... It is good to be in the moment. Yeah, yeah uh, and that can be challenging, especially, as I say, if, in the case of illness mm -hmm. and suffering. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's um, true. The Buddhist teaching <coughs> about, uh, you know, dukkha, suffering, uh, is due to tanha, desire. Mm -hmm. And desire is to be somewhere else than where we are, is to be some other time or place. Mm -hmm. 
and the Buddhist counsel is just be where you are. Mm. Let go of the desire mm. to be elsewhere, and suffering goes. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom in that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, if I'm sitting in the dentist chair, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to dwell in that particular moment, it's not so easy. Yeah, uh, and certainly people who are, are suffering with illness yes, or psychological true. suffering, um, yes. uh, that's not so easy. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Thank you. Let's get to the last leg of questions. Mm -hmm. Um, What is the value of gratitude in your life and how can you... um, I want want to learn everything from you, like whatever (laughs) you're saying today. I know that you have such a rich experience of life. Well, I think gratitude is everything. Uh, If you are a creature, Mm -hmm. if if you're not the creator, if you're not God, Mm -hmm. then everything you have received is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Uh, So gratitude is our basic, I think is the basic posture of human life. Mm -hmm. In the Christian tradition, we speak of Eucharist, Mm -hmm. of the, uh, we call the the Eucharist or Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. And Eucharist is a Greek word that Mm -hmm. means thanksgiving. Ah, okay. So I think it is the basic posture of, I think it is the basic religious posture. Mm -hmm. Gratitude and praise mm-hmm. of God. Now I know those are very. That's a very religious statement, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Uh, for me, that's the meaning of who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, all everything is a gift. Mm-hmm. All that I have, all that I am, mm-hmm. um, and is that part of your prayer? Yes, oh, that's yeah. what. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do you thank your Creator or whatever you have in the times of not uh, the, which are difficult times or challenges, uh, do you are you thankful at that time? Because it's harder to do that. It's harder, but mm-hmm. uh, you know you pray for relief mm-hmm. or f- forgiveness mm-hmm. or uh, for courage mm-hmm. or whatever you might need. But I think even as we pray, that we should even in our prayers of petition, mm-hmm. we should also have an element of thanksgiving because we know God will answer us. Mm-hmm. We may not know exactly how, mm-hmm. but if God is God, God mm-hmm. hears us, right. yeah. and God is preparing an answer. Mm-hmm. But even that takes time mm-hmm. for God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our time and God's time is different. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But I think the basic religious posture is mm-hmm. thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. What is the purpose of your life? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I would give the response to that is one I learned as a child growing up, and uh, it's a very Catholic response. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, but there's a real wisdom in it. It's to know, love, and serve God in this world, and to be happy with God in the next. Mm. And I think you as a Muslim could agree to know, love, and serve God in mm. this world yeah. and to be happy with God in the next. That was the, in the little catechism mm. we learned as children. Mm-hmm. As I get older, I said, wow, wow. That's, that's deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing I would add would be to know, love, and serve by serving God. To serve God, we need to serve one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that, you know, I, I reflect on the human mystery. What is it? mean to be human, to have this brain that mm-hmm. is the most complex structure mm-hmm. in the universe, mm-hmm. as far as we know, uh, and that out of, out of this mystery that we are emerge intelligence and will and feeling, and uh, how does one evoke meaning from that? Mm-hmm. And that's where, going back to my tradition, mm-hmm. provides me something that I can say, yeah, I, I assent to that, I agree with that, Wonderful. and live out of that. Wonderful. Nice. Um, if there was no tomorrow, what would you do today? <laughs> oh, these are hard questions. They're getting harder as <laughs> one, <laughs> Yeah, one, one, two more, and that's it. <laughs> um, I think I would, again, just try to live in the moment okay. as it is, and okay. be grateful to God okay. for it. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, any message of hope for the youth or for people who are listening to you? 
I would, you know, if you look at humanity over the past several centuries, mm -hmm. poverty has gone down. Uh, the food supply is growing. Mm -hmm. uh, wars, despite their horrible wars of the 20th century, mm -hmm. uh, they are less frequent. Um, there, there are a lot of good signs mm -hmm. across the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so on that mega level, there are good things happening. Mm -hmm. And I think by developing human intelligence and cultivating respect, hmm. we can continue that. Hmm. Hmm. So, that's so there's what, hope for that. I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. And my last question is, what lights you up? Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now my granddaughter. Okay. Uh, How does she light you up? <laughs> just to watch the unfolding of her life oh, and okay. uh, to watch her smile uh -huh. and be interested in something uh -huh. and her discovering the world uh -huh. is, is what lights me up. And I would say that's true even as my own students, as you see an idea, they get an idea for uh -huh. the first time. That, that's, that's exciting. Right. Yeah. That's probably why I came back to teaching. Okay, okay. Dr. Kelly, thank you so much. It was wonderful. My pleasure, Shua. Wonderful. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Shua.